go see you later. Hi, Facebook friends. We're just trying to get it set up uh, so that we're so that we are not too close, but you can see us. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, today we are uh, here to talk about the hotel on the corner of Bitter and Sweet. It is by um, James Ford. And um, he now lives in Montana with his family. And he grew up in, near Seattle's Chinatown. So is, uh, give us a shout out if you are watching, uh, a thumbs up. Say hello, hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, it just took us a minute because they've changed Facebook up a little bit, and so it, it just took me a minute to figure it out. Um, so, Holly, did you like the book? Overall, I loved the book. The book was great. It explained so many mm -hmm. things, um, things that I did not know, things that I've learned from the book, because it is loosely based on true events. Um, I can't praise it enough. Read it, read it, read it. And we have two or three copies that mm -hmm. can be checked out. You can also check it out on Reads. And you can also uh, get the audio book as well on Reads. So, and if you need help with that, call us, come in. Um, Holly is an expert with Reads, so she can help you there. And I can too, but um, I don't use it as, quite as much as Holly, so... Um, um, so let's just give a little background of the story and, and just a uh, um, heads up here, if, you're, if you've not read the book and you plan on reading the book, uh, you may not want to stay for the discussion because it could be some uh, spoiler Full alerts. alerts. <laughs> so, um, but, um, and, and I'm reading this just a summary. Uh, from LentLovers.com. In the opening pages of Jamie Ford's stunning debut novel, Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet, Henry Lee comes upon a crowd gathered outside the Panama Hotel, once the gateway to Seattle's Japantown. It has been boarded up for decades, but now the new owner has made an incredible discovery. The belongings the belongings, <laughs> sorry, we have visitors coming in. Thank you. Actually, she's here for the book club. <laughs> and so while she's coming in, I'll finish reading. Um, but now the new owner has made an incredible discovery. The belongings of Japan's families left when they were rounded up and sent to the Intern internment camps during the World War II. As Henry looks on the owner, the owner opens a Japanese parasol. The simple act takes old Henry Lee back to the 1940s at the height of the war when young Henry's world is a jumble of confusion and excitement. And to his father, he is obsessed with the war in China and having Henry grow up American. While scholarshiping at the exclusive Rainer Elementary, where the white kids ignore him, Henry meets Keiko, a Kobe, a young Japanese American student. And these are uh, some of these names are Chinese and Japanese. So if I do not pronounce them right, or any of us do not pronounce them right, please forgive us. Um, they are we're, different. <laughs> we're doing the best we know. We do not know these languages, so we're just doing the best we can. And with the chaos of blackouts, curfews, and FBI raids, Henry and Geico forge a bond of friendship and innocent love that transcends the long-standing prejudice of their old world ancestors. And after Keiko and her family are swept up in the ev evacuations to the internment camps, she and Henry are left only with the hope that the war will end and that their promise to each other will be kept. Um, 
40 years later, Henry Lee is certain that the parasol that the parasol belonged to Keiko. In the hotel's dark, dusty basement, he begins looking for signs of of the Okabe family's belongings for a long lost object whose value he cannot begin to measure. And we'll talk about that. Now a widower, Henry is still trying to find his voice, words that might explain the actions of his nationalist father, words that might bridge the gap between him and his modern Chinese American son, words that might help him confront the choices he made many years ago. Set during one of the most conflicted and volatile times in American history. A hotel on the corner of Bitter and Sweet is an extraordinary story of commitment and enduring hope. In Henry and Keiko, Jamie Ford has created an unforgettable duo whose story teaches us of the power of forgiveness and the human heart. So, um, Nancy, come on over here. <laughs> We're at where they can see you. Ready? I don't want to be seen. <laughs> so everyone, welcome Nancy to our group. All right. <laughs> so how did you like the book, Nancy? It was mean. <laughs> it was, yeah, there were some mean mm -hmm. things in it. Yeah, I agree. And um, abusive. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd say it was abusive, child yeah. abuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of it was. I mean, I well, he went years and years without talking to his daddy because of this. Yes. His daddy quit without talking to anyone for years. Yes. And then I think Karma came in and bit him in the butt. Oh, yes. Very much Very so. Very much so. I, I do agree with that. And I really, honestly, I didn't really look at it from the point of view as abusive. But now that you say that, mm -hmm. that was very cruel. It was very you went cruel. From Cause it, age it, 11 till what he died when he was 15 or 16. Yeah. That's about mm -hmm. five years that he abused his own son because he, wasn't, he wasn't happy with Japanese. Right. Japan. I mean, right. Yeah. And his, um, so, and I think it was, it was three years that he wasn't, um, Henry was not allowed, if you've read this book, Henry was not allowed to speak Cantonese, which is what his family spoke. And so, and they didn't understand English. So when he did talk to them, they didn't know what he was saying. He that had, I thought was funny. Yeah. Just he could say anything, anything they he wanted, wanted to. To, <laughs> to them, they wouldn't understand a word he said. <laughs> he could say he jumped off the bridge and they wouldn't understand him. They would smile and nod and be very pleased that he is speaking uh -huh. English. Yes. So uh, let me uh, see, I've got some questions here I thought we would talk about. So why do you think Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet uh, was told in flashbacks? And um, viewers, if you've read the book, please comment. Um, we see that Mary is watching. Hi Mary, hi Larry, um, and some others, but my my iPad is a distance away, so I can't <laughs> reach up there and see uh, everybody else. But hello to everyone, and thanks for joining us. So why do you think it was told in flashbacks? So that way we can understand when it starts out with him and his son of the backstory of why Henry is the way he is. Because Marty just doesn't really understand his dad too well. Even though he is based in very many traditions, family-wise, Henry is. Marty is more your American and not very traditionalist in that part. So I think Marty was trying mm -hmm. to understand who mm -hmm. his dad was and why his dad was the way he was and why the things that happened in the past, especially with um, Marty's mother mm -hmm. and the way she passed. She just passed. Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, but Henry did not want to send her to a facility so she could just die. He was very traditional. Mm -hmm. He would die at home. That's the way they rest and their peace is. And Henry was just the guy to follow mm -hmm. that and um, further that on. And at the time, Marty did not understand, understand that at all. That. Mm -hmm. And he didn't understand his father because like 
um, like Henry and his father, they their communication was not very good so and like a little better than Henry and his dad, mm -hmm. um, Marty and um, Henry did um, talk a little more than Henry and his dad, but yeah. um, not till they got of age. Not but till they got of age. age. Not yeah. till he really um, as an adult, and so that was another. Which brings me to another question: um, and how did it change for Henry um, and his dad, and Henry and Marty? Uh, Henry's son how did their relationships change from childhood to adulthood I'm going to say this Henry's father left Tana to better his family to mm -hmm. better himself to um, escape the turmoil mm -hmm. that was going on at the time mm -hmm. and he thought by what he was doing he was doing good by his son Everything that he wanted for his son, everything mm -hmm. that he did, he thought he was doing it to help his son, which Henry, his son, just did not feel that that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So they're very submissive family, submissive in traditions, mm -hmm. um, and Henry just, Henry could have broke the mold a little better, I thought, mm -hmm. if he wanted to better be better for his son Marty than his dad was for him. Right. But he could have helped him a lot more. But in, yeah. in terms he didn't. Explain mm -hmm. why he, he kept the wife at home. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just not letting him say, this is what it's going to be like. You don't have a say in this. Mm -hmm. Explain to him, hey, right. this, is, this is how I this is how I was raised. This is how we took care of her own. We didn't mm -hmm. let nobody else take care of her own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she died. She died. But she, he didn't let it that way. He mm -hmm. says, hey, you do it my way, mm -hmm. and no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It wasn't mm -hmm. until they actually found mm -hmm. some things that Marty actually looked into Henry's life to just see what kind of hardship he did go through. Exactly. And, and he, uh, Marty did not really realize any of this and find out any of this until after his mother had passed, mm -hmm. Ethel. She done been gone yeah. for three years before anything of this come mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't so. until the, the six, uh, six months maybe. That was six months to six a year. Months, maybe to yeah. a year. Yeah. And yeah. the yeah. hotel yeah. Six, opened six, up six, and six everything months. and then mm -hmm. they actually looking for the product. I mean he was not gonna let him yeah. help him at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then something clicked in his head to say, Hey, no, this is not mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. My dad done me this way. I shouldn't do him that way. Mm -hmm. Barriers mm -hmm. are broken. I mean, mm -hmm. um, like you said, you have different cultures, Chinese, Japanese, you have... Um, I didn't look at it in cultures at all. Just barriers. I just looked at it as they were a related mm -hmm. family group mm -hmm. and the different mm -hmm. relationships they went through. I didn't look at them as they were Japanese, Chinese, or anything no. like that. Mm -hmm. You looked at this as a man and his mm -hmm. wife who and he wouldn't be with his wife mm -hmm. if it wasn't for if it wasn't it went for his walk his father yes. knocking on kicking the bears and that woman yes. his actually wife mm -hmm. helping assist him in that. Mm -hmm. Yes. She mm -hmm. they could have been together all them years instead mm -hmm. of him and Ethel. Right. It could have been him and her all this right. time, but the the dad said mm -hmm. no, so mm -hmm. he put it in a place mm -hmm. to stop it at the post office. Absolutely. Because none of them letters mm -hmm. went out to that post office. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I got out of the story. Yes, at the end, at the end they, his father and mother were blocking, were not allowing his letters to go out. Do you think Ethel had a part in that? Did she yes. realize that? Yes. Yeah, because she was at I the post office. Did. I just She was at the post office. office. She, she was the one. Yeah putting the place to stop the mail from going out of, yes. the, out of the building, yes. in my opinion. And you but would, then she kept on, you know, she seen mm -hmm. him every day and everything. Mm -hmm. She got to talking to him and this mm -hmm. and that. She got bonded with him. She didn't mean to, yes. right. but she ended mm -hmm. up bonding with him and took his place. She took her I think Kiko's the book, place. I think the book said it perfectly there on the end, um, that it was a soap opera she didn't know how it was going to end. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's 
sometimes we get invested mm -hmm. with things and we've got to mm -hmm. know and, and we have to, we just want to mm -hmm. know. And I think she was, she wanted to know how it was going in, whether Kiko, Kiko, mm -hmm. Keiko came or not. And I think she started having feelings there towards the end. And she Andrew. let that one letter come through and it was the last letter. But she didn't let the response of his letter go out. So right. he didn't know whether or not she was going to meet that lady mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. No. So why did she show up anyway? Right, because Keiko actually had not heard from him when he thought it was, he thought he was, it was her not responding to him, but it was actually. His letters not getting to her. Not getting had to, to her. Up, yes. How you know her letters yeah. didn't get stopped at the mailbox post? Right. Well, some of them did go through. And some of them did, but they didn't. Did when she first started yeah. it, it was, mm -hmm. she was writing mm -hmm. daily. Daily. She liked right. to write, she liked to draw, mm -hmm. so she was writing daily. That's true. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, she you didn't hear from her for three or four mm -hmm. months. Yeah. So you don't know if the mail got stopped at the post office altogether or both at ways. The, at the concentration camp. Yeah. yeah. So you don't know. Yeah. Which they, I think, also in the book mm -hmm. they said that the one that they mm -hmm. moved on to was um, Happy, um, Happy, I cannot remember, but it was Happy something. Um, that's the one that they mm -hmm. went to first. Then they moved mm -hmm. them to Idaho. So when they were moved to Idaho, sorry, I talk with my hands. Um, <laughs> I do too. When they sorry moved to that. Idaho, they, they set up a little community. Mm -hmm. I mean, one mm -hmm. of the biggest that it, the book said in the community mm -hmm. and- They went to school, they done everything, they done everything. routine like they did. Mm -hmm. They even had that? Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, even though it was a bad time, for the Japanese, I think if in the long run, what was bad turned mm -hmm. out to be actually good in a sense. Um, the communities come together more. The, mm -hmm. the, even though they shipped them off to a concentration camp, they made the best of what they had. Um, well, at that particular camp that they uh, were supposed to be in, and, and the author does talk about um, what was real, you know, what, uh, and uh, for instance, the record mm -hmm. was not real as we know it. No. It was not a real record. And uh, we'll get to how that. Did I get, how did you know that? I, I read it. Know. It's in the back of uh, an the author, the author notes. Um, I didn't read the author notes. Yeah. He, it's loosely based on true events. Yes, yes. And, but there were large, there were thousands and thousands at, at these camps. Uh, and I looked it up online and uh, like on PBS was one of the um, websites. It was not really a great place to be, but they made the most of it while they were there is Absolutely. what I got from it. Um, but I do think, um, getting back to he the relationships of Henry and Marty and Henry and his dad, mm -hmm. um, which Marty called him Yaya. Yaya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Or so, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so with, I believe as they became adults uh, and they, their communication finally uh, broke the barriers um, a, a newfound respect came into place and um, and as kids because of the lack of communication um, there was a lack of respect and, and a sense of rebellion there as well between the daddy and the yeah. Henry, Henry and ourselves yeah but not into Henry and her, Marty no there was just more or less no, not a closeness. No as closeness whatsoever yeah. because he didn't understand mm -hmm. why he couldn't go to that fun park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. in Henry's mind, that fun that farm park was a bad place. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. but to Marty's opinion, mm -hmm. it was somewhere to entertain himself, right. have fun with. Mm -hmm. But he never did explain that until the end of the book. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, and that kind of brings up a really good point that, you know, in any relationship, I think that, um, you know, that lack of communication can form barriers 
um, you know, in any in any um, situation. So um, that was a really I'm good not point. The only one that does hot sugar. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that so that's not the um, you know I. I I think Overall, that, the oh, book was interesting. I, mm -hmm. could, you couldn't put it down. No, it was very it was, good. Once oh. I got started on it, I couldn't put it down until I finished it. Yes. Mm -hmm. It took me about three days. Yes. And it, there's a lot of detail, so you really get, you really can picture everything. You, you get a good um, understanding, and that's can, what I like. You it, can see Japantown, absolutely. Chinatown. Chinatown. Um, Chaz, yeah, uh, you can see the bully there. You can, you can really. Chaz see is the all one I thought was okay. The whole different ball game yes. from him being a bully to what happens at the very end. He's like night and day because oh, he yes. went through all this because he did do all the vandalism mm -hmm. and he did have to pay the consequences of yes. all that. Mm -hmm. And he actually did mm -hmm. do his best to hold his peace. Yeah. Yes. So um, Henry might have got beat up, but he went out. He went for it all. That's what I like. And he, they had different respect to each other by the end of the book. Yeah, yes, they did. So even though they did would go different directions, right. you know, mm -hmm. Chaz is not gonna pick on him no more. No, no, not, no, not whatsoever. No. I mean, he's mm -hmm. gonna be like night and day. He's humble. You see him. He, mm -hmm. you see him on the side of the walk. They'll speak. Hey, hey, whatever, and yeah. go their mm -hmm. separate ways, but they're mm -hmm. not going to be chummy, chummy. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be chummy, chummy after you've been bullied majority no. of your life. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Um, and so, um, the story de demands of loyalty, sacrifice, and tradition. Perhaps it's easy to, to see what Henry is asked to give up, but what does he gain? So in, in giving up uh, waiting for uh, Gato, what does he gain, I guess? Well, he gains quite a lot. Mm -hmm. he, gain, he loses a lot, mm -hmm. but he gains a lot. The, and therefore the title, mm -hmm. Bitter and Sweet. <laughs> mm -hmm. he, gain, he loses his dad, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he gains the respect of his mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He gets the gain of Ethel and Marty. That's the mm -hmm. best thing of his life. Mm -hmm. But I live of mm -hmm. uh, not seeing Kiko and see what happens to her and where she go. Because at the end of the book, you still don't know whether or not they're together or not. You're still in awe saying, are they going to go any further than this? Because she's a widow and he's, well, yeah, both of them are widows, right? Mm -hmm. They're both, mm -hmm. I think. Yes. And then, and Geico, you know, he lost his first love. First love, his um, first kiss. It, that was so cute. But, but you didn't know it was his first kiss until you got into it. Into mm -hmm. the capture mm -hmm. of all that before yeah. they got the first kiss. And, but and, but he, he gains the respect mm -hmm. of her mom yes. and dad. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they they are, by the way, they are American Japanese who were born in America, so they did not speak, in, or yes, they did not speak Japanese, mm -mm. or um, have very many of the traditions of the Japanese at the time. No. So. And she, but she does end up learning her part of it, because mm -hmm. she has to go to school with all them mm -hmm. kids uh -huh. to learn Japanese. So she's yes. got a lot going on in her direction. Mm -hmm. And her, her mm -hmm. uh, respect, and she's got mm -hmm. what, how many kids she end up having, three? Around three, I don't I think she had three, three, and they're all of age now, mm -hmm. like Marty is. He just mm -hmm. had, she just had, Henry just had mm -hmm. the one. But well, then you look at the daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like his daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she done everything she could think of to help Henry. Absolutely. And I mm -hmm. thought, even though the music was, you know, the ideal having this, the music there mm -hmm. in the hospital bed. And telling that guy he can leave, Sheldon, Sheldon. would made it mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. work because it made the bonds of Henry mm -hmm. and the daughter-in-law mm -hmm. even closer. Mm -hmm. But she said you don't. It wasn't the daughter-in-law that did it. It mm -hmm. was the son. He mm -hmm. found the record. He found the girl. Mm -hmm. He done it all for his daddy, for 
the closeness they needed to get where they was going. Right. But also the daddy took a part mm -hmm. in saying, hey, help me here. Yes. I'm doing this. Right. I don't know if you want to get dirty or not, but mm -hmm. this is what I'm doing if you want to come along. Absolutely. If he didn't do that, probably none of that end of that book would have been in the book today. Right. right. His daddy started to say, hey, Mm -hmm. Marty wanted to know what he's doing and why he's so happy and mm -hmm. not so happy and all mm -hmm. this, but he didn't want to pressure him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to say, hey, Dad, what are you doing? Can I right. help? And and Samantha kind of pushed all that. His fiance, mm -hmm. Marty's fiance, pushed that. And put him, mm -hmm. give him the meat, I mean, mm -hmm. the meal he enjoyed, the, the tea enjoyed. he enjoyed, mm -hmm. the dessert he enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm put it all in there and it made them all more of a close family than what he had when he was growing up. Right. But I did like the idea mm -hmm. his mother was still on, the, mm -hmm. on his side even though she was trying to do what her husband wanted her to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Henry's law, absolutely. Because she sit there and had a, actually a decent meal waiting on him when he came back, back from there. And I'm thinking, wow, that was... Mm -hmm. Actually, no, he's going to be back. Absolutely. What time she was going to be back, but she had it ready. I had to warm it up. It mm -hmm. was more or less warm, too, when he got there. Mm -hmm. I like that mm -hmm. part. My thoughts on that was he was 12 at the time. This is 1942. Again, different advances, different times. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let my kids do that today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no way. Kids go no. No. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. I'm worried about mine. They just cross. Oh, yeah, right. Absolutely, and then Sheldon, he was Henry's one true friend. There was huge age difference right there, and but I think Sheldon understood Henry a lot more than Henry actually understood himself, and Sheldon was his guardian, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. in the book to kind of help him figure mm -hmm. out his way because mm -hmm. Henry was, I felt Henry was very lost. Mm -hmm. He was still trying to find his way. Yeah, because he didn't know what to do. He didn't understand mm -hmm. why his daddy was pushing him to feel this way. As they called it, uh, school shipping. Mm -hmm. Scholarshipping. Yeah. Scholarshipping. Well, they're shipping him like they're mm -hmm. shipping him away. Mm -hmm. That's the way I got, and that's the way he felt. They, mm -hmm. they shipped him to another whole different ball game and left him there. To fend for himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he didn't fend for himself, yeah. he's going to fall mm -hmm. on his face, and mm -hmm. he did several times. And I think that uh, the, the com what Sheldon and Henry had in common, along with even uh, Gayco um, and some of the other characters uh, within the town mm -hmm. um, and Chinatown, Japantown, was that they all struggled with uh, being accepted as Americans and uh, with the same rights as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so they all struggled with that. And so they had that commonality um, to, that I think bonded them. Um, because otherwise, you know, other than the music, that's uh, what Henry and Sheldon had in common. Mm -hmm. We had the music, music and the lunch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because he got rid of his lunch every day. Every day. Oh, yeah. And right. gave it to Sheldon. Yeah. yeah. Sheldon so, ate well, at least one good meal every day. Every if day. It, yes. If it, it wasn't what he wanted, mm -hmm. it but wasn't it was what Henry meal. wanted, but Sheldon got mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and he didn't complain. Right. And then it was so hilarious when they get to where they're going to the first go around and they don't know what to do because you've got to. Mm -hmm. China boy and mm -hmm. black man and a yeah. group of mm -hmm. people that are mm -hmm. saying, what the shit, you know, yeah. do I stay yeah. over here, do I stay here, do I, what, what do, do I do? do? Yeah. I'm it's, scared to death, but what yeah. am I, I'm doing here. That's that just at the time of segregation, yeah. before mm -hmm. segregation and things, and I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. it covers a lot. And the, school, uh, the cafeteria lady, oh, I thought she was funny. Is there. that not your <laughs> surprise character? Yes. You're su she's, which she's one surprised you? You're looking at Mrs. She Beanie. was meaner than heck, telling you what's what to what. do. You, yes. get, you get this done, you get this done. I'm going out for my lunch. Yes. First, yes. first thought of Mrs. Beatty was, oh my goodness. But then <laughs> once you get into the story, Mrs. Beatty is like the other angel for yeah. Henry. She so. had that. She had a soft 
heart under all that hard exterior. Both of them. Um, she had to have a hard mm -hmm. exterior because mm -hmm. she was in control of uh, the cafeteria. Situ right. She had to be controlled. She had to take. She can't show yeah. no sympathy yes. for one person and not the right. other. You yeah. can't do that. And again, you have to think about this is back in the time you know where women. We're still still struggling to yeah. gain that respect in the workplace. Absolutely, and, and she's you know the you know. But this was first the time that women had to go this. into the workplace so because the men were in at war. I think that's mm -hmm. where that hard exterior mm -hmm. comes into play as well. Her background is her father's yeah. in the military. Mm -hmm. I can't ask the submarine Marines maybe, or I could be wrong. Um, but he. Um, his second, her father's second in command, I think, mm -hmm. was an Asian man, and they were super good friends. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where she, her heart, kind mm -hmm. of grew for these two kids. Mm -hmm. you because know, you know there were they're an separate, extended family, mm -hmm, separate, so. separate places, mm -hmm. but brought together in one place, and she was over that place. Mm -hmm. But she couldn't show sympathy. Mm -hmm. But then again, I like the idea she. Uh, Took up for more or less Henry and, and Chaz. And and, yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you think um, she had maybe there was more of a reason she had compassion upon the Japanese uh, that maybe wasn't played out in the book or revealed um, because you know she was smuggling in his stuff things to uh, the camp. For the Japanese, you know, or it kind of hinted. Yeah, I know she did for Keiko, but for it kind birthday. of it really hinted that she was doing that. Yeah, a lot, lot more than we all time. The other she, mm -hmm. she tools magically appeared, and mm -hmm. food magically appeared, yes. and this mm -hmm. and that they needed magically appeared, mm -hmm. and it all come out of the truck that she was mm -hmm. driving. Her, mm -hmm. but you don't think then they make her look like she's only doing it. For the money, yeah, they do kind of, you know, for the right. benefit of her own self, right? Nobody else, but I think, right. she, like, I'm like, I think you. deep down, I think she didn't do it for that, she did it to help them. She, she's thinking that might have been part of it, but not the whole reason, no. yeah, yeah. Part of it was mm -hmm. little part mm -hmm. of it was the money wise, mm -hmm. the other part was her friends got killed. I'm hoping that what I do. Somebody will return the favor to my dad yeah, where right. he's at. Absolutely. Right. Because her dad because was her dad missing. Was that, yes, that's yeah. a very good point. Say, yes. hey, okay, what mm -hmm. I do, maybe it'll maybe get back to where he's mm -hmm. at and, and maybe they'll know assist she's him. Okay and, mm -hmm. Maybe and it'll assist him. Because you know, yeah. she's thinking in her mind, mm -hmm. is he dead? Right. What happened to him? Where's he at? Yes. You know, what if I help these people? Yes. Maybe these people will mm -hmm. turn around and help this people and these people mm -hmm. turn around. Yes. And some way down the line, it gets to my dad. Absolutely. And he was he was in Germany, mm -hmm. right? Somewhere yeah. it started. I think it yeah. started in Germany, mm -hmm. and then worked that way, and then Pearl Harbor. It's it's a quaint little history lesson that oh, I know yes. I didn't get to learn it, yes. or I wasn't taught in school. But you know, I know hands are tied at that point. But it gets you thinking. It gets you looking things up. It gets you to hey, act. Hey. hey did this would this really happen Absolutely. back then? Because it's 1942, and I'm thinking my mom mm -hmm. is just three years old. You know? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And how did this affect? How did it affect my side here? of the family? And this and that. Yeah. And, right. You know, you're just talking about people that's in Idaho mm -hmm. and in places here that we know locally. You know, here in Tennis, I mean, here in the United States, and you're thinking, well, mm -hmm. God, how close? Was it? I mean, it's right. super close. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, out of that, you've got Oak Ridge, which used to be the secret city. A lot mm -hmm. of women and men had to work there. So that was part of this time frame here versus Seattle, Washington, and stuff like that. Washington was a port state. A lot of the ships come in and they um, offloaded, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, the sailors and stuff, mm -hmm. they come in and um, on their Where was the Please. first camp at? Where was it located? Um, I can't remember that part. Let's see. They, they called it um, Camp Harmony. Yeah, Camp Harmony. And it was in Idaho. No, no, no. It was still. It was a little past Seattle, and then that was just 
at the fairgrounds. Camp Harney was at the fairgrounds in Seattle. Okay. And then, um, because the way they painted, mm -hmm. they went out and in Idaho, of course, the other state. Um, they couldn't keep them there forever due to the fact that it was a fairgrounds and mm -hmm. the one in Idaho mm -hmm. would come up. Mm -hmm. So, and it was more stable, more, you know. I like that. I did, it wasn't nice of them, but it also made them feel mm -hmm. wanted when they actually took them in mm -hmm. and helped them, they helped build it to where that's going to stay for a little while. Absolutely. That made them feel, and then they was able to go into right. the military, mm -hmm. even though they was fighting mm -hmm. against. Absolutely. You know. And then these men's backgrounds mm -hmm. were different. They were doctors, they were lawyers, they were mm -hmm. carpenters. Lawyers became mm -hmm. carpenters, doctors became carpenters, and they all mm -hmm. just band together in this community and helped each other out so that was and Keiko's uh, mm -hmm. dad he talked about um, why they chose to say because Henry asked him he said there are thousands of you here mm -hmm. more than the guards there were only like 200 and something guards and they can overpower them at any time. Yes, and yeah. he was so he asked him, Why have you not? And it was loyalty. They wanted to show America that they were loyal. And uh, I, I just thought that was interesting. They could have left at any moment, Anytime. but they chose not to. But then the other side of it was, you know, he said, well, Where would we go? So. They didn't have anything to come back to to Seattle, so right. you know. No, they lost yeah, all that. They lost all that. Because as soon as they were gone, his vandalism mm -hmm. started. People mm -hmm. started buying mm -hmm. their property mm -hmm. cheaper than if they had bought it themselves. And what was the connection with Henry and the Panama Hotel that and Chaz? Um, what was that? The point at Panama mm -hmm. Hotel was that's where she stayed. That's mm -hmm. where they were living now. Mm -hmm. With Chaz, his daddy was coming in and buying all, all the, the property, property at mm -hmm. in the Panama Hotel. It's one thing his daddy asked him not to give up. Mm -hmm. And he stopped a lot of that because mm -hmm. his daddy didn't know his language. <laughs> He was able to stop them from mm -hmm. buying any property. Right. Yeah. Because his dad was part of, of trying to sell it because of of his um, hatred toward the ja uh, Japanese mm -hmm. uh, because the Japanese and China were also fighting, mm -hmm. and so he had his dad had an agenda there and had a lot of hate. I felt like in his heart and. Um, that's all he did. That's all he mm -hmm. lived for, for is to listen to the news to mm -hmm. see whether or not. Mm -hmm. And at the very yeah. end, he dies before finding out the war is over. Yes. yes. That is what kind of dumbfounded me. Mm -hmm. He's sitting here listening mm -hmm. to it all this time. Mm -hmm. And when the war is going to end for good, you know, it's mm -hmm. over and done with. That's the day he dies. Yes. Without realizing mm -hmm. that, hey, if the war's over, you can quit being so yeah. crouchy mm -hmm. and so <laughs> mean to people. <laughs> Yes, he didn't look at the Japanese Americans as Americans, they just like still, you know they the, were Japanese they, to him, and they they done this to him. Mm -hmm. They're Japanese is the one that mm -hmm. didn't bombed the Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's not what they do. Mm -hmm. That's not what you did, mm -hmm. and because of that, he just it, it came it just roller coastered mm -hmm. into more and more hatred. And That's I, all he lived for. Yeah. yeah. And I think that really interfered with his relationship with Henry mm -hmm. as well. That all of that, um, you know, uh, hatred and um, unforgiveness that he held in his heart, I think that interfered and, and played a part in the lack of the relationship. The lack of the relationship mm -hmm. in, with Henry mm -hmm. and the his health because yes. he was stressed out over, over so much, much. Mm -hmm. about what the Japanese were mm -hmm. doing and what not what Henry's doing mm -hmm. care less about what Henry's doing Henry's mm -hmm. out here and out and about God knows where <laughs> mm -hmm. and you don't you're clueless mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. get kicked out of a more or less a bar mm -hmm. nightclub mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and you're clueless of why he was even there 
and he could have went to jail that mm -hmm. night and you would have been mm -hmm. known. The Black Elk Club, right? Mm -hmm. Is that yes. it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Black Elk. Well, Elks yeah. he, Alps or whatever. Elks. He, Elks. he liked jazz music. Um, and so your daddy did not. His dad didn't like music really at all, and it, he especially didn't like the jazz mm -hmm. music. And at the jazz clubs, anybody of, um, you know, any culture, background could come there to um, and why not have a good time and be yep. accepted like, and they and, accepted mm -hmm. like her the girl's teacher was there mm -hmm. and got arrested mm -hmm. doesn't say why but mm -hmm. they got arrested mm -hmm. yeah. and them them well they thought legally they thought they, they were spies, spies. Mm -hmm. but legally moonshine mm -hmm. and liquor into the into the facility. Mm -hmm. All you had to do is take a note in there yes. and like, here, take it on out. Yeah. And there were minors, you know? Yeah. You shouldn't be giving this to minors. Prohibition. No. You shouldn't be giving this to minors, but you're giving it to minors to take over here to to this man that mm -hmm. you know what he's doing with it. He's drinking it and he's mm -hmm. boozing up mm -hmm. and they're playing loud music mm -hmm. and you're letting it happen. And then the but to I think to the people there, it was a place to escape what was going on in America. Escape the reality. torture and the yeah. Death. You know what? Escape the you reality imagine, of what's happening. Uh, could you imagine you're sitting there in front, you're standing on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden a bunch of law officers come in mm -hmm. and they're taking these people out mm -hmm. by the handfuls. Yeah. Well, they just. When they went into Black Elk, they they only took the Japanese because they thought, and they they said, forget the bootlegging. That's mm -hmm. for another day. Yeah, our agenda today is Let's take all these Japanese yeah. out of here. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting there looking like, mm -hmm. oh my God, does yeah. that mean I'm going? Right. Even though he had his little pin on him, yeah, button, mm -hmm. had his little button, mm -hmm. and he hated that little button, mm -hmm. but he, he wore it every button. day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and he gives her one of them buttons. And 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 he. Something that he said in the book that really, um, he said it to his dad and he said it to his mother. Um, he said, you made me American. It's what you made me into. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they wouldn't let him speak Cantonese, so therefore he felt like he had been deserted, you know, <coughs> by his... Um, father and really by his mother but his mother was she was just standing by him the way and I thought I thought Henry I thought Ethel and Henry's mother were alike in that mm -hmm. way they yeah. stood by their husband regardless of what they felt uh, right should or be wrong. right or wrong yes I, so. Henry's mom she surprised me mm -hmm. a little bit too um she knew Henry had befriended Tico and knew she was Japanese. I think for mm -hmm. the biggest part she really didn't, but then there mm -hmm. at the end she knew, but mm -hmm. she still helped him mm -hmm. with some of the letters mm -hmm. and helped him with things. And she understood that he had to go see Tico and mm -hmm. uh, and figure out his own his own path, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she understood that whether his father did or not. Yes. Um, so, I think um, we could go into so much more detail, that, uh, so much more discussion on this book. Um, but if you haven't read this book, come and check it out or go to uh, reads.com and check it out using your library card. Um, so glad that you joined us here today and um, have a good rest of the day. Bye.